Aloha and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we'll get to know a bird that is close to my heart, Hawaii's native crow called the alala. The alala are so rare that there are none in the wild for many years. See what's being done to help them come back from the brink of extinction and learn what you can do to help them with your art. We'll even learn how to draw and paint the alala. All this and more on this feather-friendly episode of Painting in Paradise! Did you know that Hawaii has a native crow called the alala? Hawaii has a crow? Yes, well, it's kind of a crow. The alala is a type of corvid. What's a corvid? Corvids are a family of birds that include crows and ravens. That looks like a raven to me. The alala evolved into its own unique corvid species that exists nowhere else in the world. We know from fossils that other kinds of corvids also lived in Hawaii, but they became extinct before modern man ever knew about them. What is an alala? What does alala mean? Alala loosely translated means to cry out loud. Alala! 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 The first time I heard of the alala was in 1984 when I was asked by the state of Hawaii to paint the poster of this bird that I had never even seen or heard of. My uncle Ernest told me he used to see the alala in the Kalokumauka area of Kona when he was a linesman for the Hawaiian Telephone Company. My cousin Anthony and I searched the forest and could not find any alala. That's because there were hardly any left in the wild. The first time I saw the birds in person was at a state breeding facility at Pohakuloa Big Island. The Endangered Species Project Supervisor at the time was a man named Afat Lee. Afat let me in to see the birds and one came bouncing right up to me. It rolled over as if to say, scratch my belly. Right away, I knew there was something special about this creature who seemed to behave more like a dog than a bird. Since then, I've had a deep appreciation for the alala and I've followed its plight and struggle for survival. In ancient times, the alala were highly regarded and sometimes even kept as companions or pets. It was also said to be the almakua or guardian spirit of some Hawaiian families. Over the years, the alala's numbers have declined due to loss of habitat, introduced diseases, and reckless shooting. In the early 1990s, it was determined that the best chance for the alala's survival was to bring the last of the wild birds into captivity and breed them in highly specialized facilities. In 1992, the call of the wild alala went silent. That's when the last of the free living birds disappeared. Since then, all of the world's alala have been kept in captive breeding facilities on the Big Island and Maui. Many scientists and biologists have been working hard to keep the remaining birds healthy and build their population up for a successful return to the wild. In my own lifetime, I've seen native birds become extinct, like Maui's Po'o'uli. I've also seen birds like the Nene make a comeback from near extinction. I hope with all my heart that the alala will regain their place in Hawaiian forests. Alala are really, really unique because before human contact, there were as many as five corvid species across the Hawaiian islands. So alala were found historically on the big islands up until 2002, and they were found in the fossil record on Maui. Alala are mostly frugivorous, which means that they mostly eat fruits. And this makes them really important seed dispersers to our native forests. The Alala Project is a partnership between three major partners, the State of Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources, the San Diego Zoo Global, and US Fish and Wildlife Service. So the Alala Project contacted artist Patrick Ching and we were fortunate enough to connect with a fourth grade class at Connections Public Charter School 
to create this mural with Patrick's guidance and assistance. We just completed a study on the foraging behavior of Alala, and we found that Alala used tools to extract food from small holes and crevices. We've known for a long time that Alala are extremely intelligent, but it wasn't until we conducted this study that we realized just how skilled Alala are at using tools. For example, nearly all adult Alala use tools, and they can all extract a food item from a small crevice in less than one minute. Alala probably developed this tool use foraging technique a long time ago because historically, there were very few or no Hawaiian species that used an excavating foraging technique. Now, Alala are one of only two species of corvids around the world that use tools completely on their own. So what can those of us who don't work directly with Alala do to help them? Well, how about doing some art? By creating Alala art, you can help bring awareness and support to this beloved bird. Recently, the Volcano Art Center put on a show called Return of the Alala, Restoring the Voice of Hawaii's Native Forests, featuring artists from all over Hawaii. Before this happened, I never even knew we had the alala. When we return, we'll see what a school located in a famous building in Hilo did to support the alala through art. On a trip to Hilo, I was honored to paint a mural featuring the alala on the historic Crest Building, now home to the Connections Charter School. The mural is my way of welcoming the alala back to the forest. Many people put their aloha into the mural as well. Some were folks who have been working closely with the alala, and others just happened to be passing by. Famous Hilo designer Sig Zane created a border for the mural to finish it off. I really like this, this mural here because it brings the forest to downtown Hilo. The release of the alala into the wild is something so special, you know, and we really hope for its success. So the design that Sig Zane came up with are the seed pods of the Lehua blossom. Imagine when these uh, blossoms get full and the little things fall off, there's a seed pod left and that's what reignites our forest. When I was thinking about the border design, I wanted to bring to this uh, wall a prophecy of really trying to bring in more of the ohia, more of the forest. This really is a symbol of the, the lehua seed and really each one represents 40 or 400 or 4,000. There is no um, limit but infinity. The bigger picture is we cannot do without the forest. So with these seeds, with these lehua pods, we hope for a multitude of forests forever. The Connection School fourth graders even created their own mural to give the Alala more aloha for its successful return to the wild. We painted the plants and animals that live with the Alala. I painted the old me. I worked on this Alala right here. I worked on the eel, the Hawaiian hawk. I painted the kalo. I painted the mono. I painted the lehua mama. I did the leaves of the old hellaberry. I did the eva. We've been really lucky and fortunate to, to be next door and to watch the progress. Um, and Patrick is awesome and the, the murals are both beautiful.
Hello everybody and thank you so much for being here uh, to help us dedicate this mural and to put all of our good thoughts into the successful release and survival of the Halala back into the wild of the Hawaiian forests. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for putting their love and aloha into the mural. It is by myself and the beautiful people of Hilo. And here we have the Alala uh, raising their, their young in the nest back in the Hawaiian forest with the canoes and the rest of the wildlife. Even their, their housemate and sometimes predator, the eel, Hawaiian hawk. And, uh, other animals, the little blossoms and the iiwi. Really appreciate you coming out and I wanted to um, send our aloha to uh, Reverend Crabs. Reverend. Awesome seeing the children working together with everyone else. Mahalo for that. And I, I would see this one word that came to me was inspired. And what happened is you have this incredible gift and this aloha that you shared with the kinky. And they uh, now have something that will be shared with people walk up and down our streets and visit our city. We'll see all of these murals, all of your guys' paintings and all of your own. And I'm just so proud of you guys and I'm so happy for Mrs. Wines and the class that they got to participate in this project. Now get your paper and pencils ready and I'll show you how to draw your very own alala when we return to... Are you ready? Yes. Okay, now I don't want anybody being tight. Are you guys tight? I want you to loosen up, okay? Relax. Oh, yeah. Okay, are you loosen up? Okay, stretch. Oh, other side. Because okay. I don't want you guys all tight and tense, like. I want you to loosen up, okay? Very good. I want you to watch what I do and then go and follow it. Remember to press. Softly. Okay. So in the middle of your paper, we'll put it horizontally. Just about a teardrop, right in the middle of the page, about like that. Okay. Go ahead. Turn it like this. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our head in, and I bet you know what shape that's gonna be. A circle. Okay. Here we go. Let's put a circle right around there. Just about that big. Go ahead and. Put a circle just like that. Okay, now we're gonna put the wing in. And the wing is gonna look just like the body, okay? So we're gonna make another section over here. And we'll put a wing in right here. Right in the body, like that, okay? Then we can put the tail in like a square or a little rectangle right about there. For the part that makes the noise, the beak, the part that goes, ah, la, la. yeah? Okay, so let's give him a nice robust upper beak like that. And a little slender lower beak like that. There we go. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is put a little oval right here where his, like his, his drumstick is. Um, a little oval right there where his leg goes. Followed by a couple of lines for his leg. Okay, and his foot right around there. Okay, now all of us have how many feet? Two. Two, and how many did we do so far? One. One, right. So let's do another foot. Okay, so just put one in the back here and repeat the shape there, okay? Okay. 
So we got one foot in the back, one in the front. And you can go ahead and draw a branch that your olive oil is going to be on. Okay, it goes right under the feet like that. And you can shape your branch different from anybody else. And you can put his maca in. What is the maca? Right, his eye. So the maca can go right there. Right around there. And remember, we just pressed softly. We formed up our alala. We didn't finish it yet. This is just kind of a, a guide for where you, everything's gonna go. All right, our next stage of the drawing is gonna be adding outlines and details. You're gonna press a little harder. I'm gonna use a pen so you can see what we're doing. We'll start at the end of the beak here. Go up the top of the head. Oh yeah, using that as a guide, I'm gonna swoop the top of the head to the top of the body. I'll stop at that wing right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come around and do the bottom part of the wing a little heavier. There you go, I might leave a gap there if you want. Right here, I can make the little tuft of feathers go over the tail a little bit. And then finish the tail. If you want to give them something like this. Okay. You can do the tail like that. Jugga jugga effect. You know what jugga jugga effect? Jugga jugga jugga. Okay. And then we'll also give them a little jugga jugga there. Then I'll continue outlining my alala. Kind of feathers like that. Now in the wing we can do a little bit of a motion like this for feathers up top. The alala has a nice strong feather right here. It's almost like a finger. Okay. And then it's primary feathers, the long ones at the ends, they're like our fingers, whee! And they can be long like that. And I'll give it even more detail. And you can give the tree some lines or texture, whatever you want there. I think I do like airplanes. I always make airplane noises when I draw. All right, and now we got just one more stage of the drawing, and that is the shading. And I'll put the sun up here, and I give him some rays shining down. Oh, don't forget to put your signature, gang. You know what a signature is? Signature. It's kind of like an autograph. It goes right there, okay? You can put your secret pen name if you want. And there you have it, an alala. When we return, we'll have some fun painting the alala. Mahalo to the most irresistible shop in Hilo for hosting an alala painting party.
today really nervous, but he's a good teacher and he made it really fun. And now I think I created a little bit of a masterpiece. My is the bird, um, especially the head, because Patrick helped me. <laughs> Patrick and I started collaborating on this, and this is a miracle, and I'm getting emotional because it's, I just think it's beautiful. I got to learn about how to paint the olive and also a sunset. Since their reintroduction into the forest in 2017, the Alala have had some struggles and successes as they adopt to their new forest homes. Recently, the Alala project announced the construction of the first Alala nest to be built in the wild in recent history. Two nests were built, one by Manaolana and Manaya Kalani, and a second by Ho'oi Kaika and Liliu Velu. These were the first recorded Alala nests in the wild in over 20 years. While neither of these nests produced chicks, they are promising milestones towards the birds re-establishing themselves in the forest. Recovering the alala in the wild will take many years and lots of work. This painting is called Alala Ohana. It's of a family of alala thriving again near Puuwa'awa'a in a place where they once flourished. So I'm here at the most irresistible shop in Hilo, yep that's the name of it, and they so graciously let me come here and work on my painting Alala Ohana. And when I'm painting birds, you'll notice that I have them in all different degrees of completeness. You know, this bird hardly looks done, actually. It just got started. Whereas these look a little more finished, and this mama up here is looking a lot more complete. When I'm doing them, I'm building them with layers, and the magic happens in the transparent layers. Dark birds reflect the color of their surroundings, uh, like the blue sky. It can be bluish and purplish, sometimes a little greenish. Uh, whatever it is, it's a very dark bird showing us its environment by the colors that it reflects. I'm gonna go in here and work on a little bit of highlights. Okay, and you'll see it just get a little brighter, just where I want it to. So a lot of times I'm gonna be working with colors like phthalo blue and violet. And I can put those little and my highlights are reflections. I'll go from darker highlights to lighter highlights. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I'd love to see what you created in art. So send your paintings to Patrick at PatrickTeachingArt.com. Aloha!